Solar energy is the ideal way to power a spacecraft. There's no weather, there's no pesky atmosphere, just pure photons streaming from the sun to harvest for whatever you need. Well, as long as you're within the inner solar system. But solar panels are complicated and fragile, made of sensitive electronics and glass, and not to mention, really heavy. Any spacecraft equipped with solar panels needs to handle the gravity down here on Earth for the construction and testing. Then the shaking and high G's of launch. The solar panels need to unfold perfectly once they get to space, and the total amount of energy you can harvest is limited by the size of your rocket launch fairing. Maybe there's a new strategy. NASA is currently funding research into a new type of solar panel that can be carried into space as a liquid and then sprayed onto a surface. We've talked in previous videos about how important space-based manufacturing and construction is going to be. Ideally, you'd want the raw materials from space, but until that happens, it still makes a lot of sense to carry your resources packed tightly in a rocket and then assembled as big a structure as you need once you're in space. Made in Space's Arconaut 1 is set to demonstrate how it should be possible to 3D print the structures that hold the spacecraft solar panels, but it's still going to be deploying traditional solar cells. And MIT has shown how tiny robots working together as teams could assemble space-based structures of almost any size. But the assumption has been that the more complicated electronics, solar panels, and other hardware will still need to come from the Earth until we have serious space-based manufacturing in place. Traditional solar panels, or photovoltaics, directly convert light into electricity, harnessing the photoelectric effect. When atoms absorb photons of light, they can release electrons. A solar panel collects these electrons and puts them to work. Albert Einstein earned his Nobel Prize in 1905, explaining how this process worked. And in the 1950s, engineers were making the first rudimentary photovoltaic modules. This technology was perfect for the space industry, which needed a way of generating electricity beyond the reach of the longest extension cords. Modern solar panels are really just electronics. Large numbers of solar cells are connected together into panels, and they generate current depending on how much light is falling on them. Advances in solar energy technology have sandwiched several layers of solar cells together, typically different flavors of gallium arsenide, with each layer extracting energy from different photon wavelengths. The most modern solar panels in use by NASA today typically have three layers, and can convert 34% of sunlight into electricity. But they're working on versions with four and even six layers that could convert even a higher percentage. There's an entirely different technology called perovskite solar panels, which might enable spray printed panels in space. Perovskites are crystals with a cube like lattice structure, which can harvest photons. They're less efficient than photovoltaics providing just over 10% electricity from sunlight. And unfortunately, they're also incredibly sensitive to moisture and oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. But they have their advantages. The crystals don't need to be wired up like electronics. They can just be produced in large sheets. Researchers from Rice University announced this week that they've been able to overcome some of the downsides of perovskite crystals using different materials that resulted in fewer defects. They were able to make panels with an efficiency of 12% and a voltage of 1.2 volts. Even better, the panels were able to stand up to a high humidity environment for months without degrading, while traditional crystals decayed within a few days. The researchers think they can get them up to 20% efficiency over time. Eventually, we should get to a point that this material can just be sprayed onto any surface, let it dry, and you've got a solar panel of any size. So what about using them in space? I'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Jules Verne, Steve Reberg, Alfonso Streeter, and the rest of our 830 patrons for their generous support. Educational content should be freely available to anyone in the world, and the patrons make this possible. Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today and get in on the action. Professor Sayantani Ghosh and the students at University of California Merced have developed a process for spraying liquid perovskite crystals over a surface, like the technology inside an inkjet printer. 
A small nozzle deposits the material as a film about 250 times thinner than human hair onto a substrate that provides the structure of the panel. According to a press release from UC Merced, just a single liter of perovskite solution could cover a football field sized sheet of solar absorbers in space. I mentioned the disadvantages of perovskites. They're a salt crystal and very sensitive to moisture. Here on Earth, the crystals need to be encased in plastic to protect them from the environment. But moisture isn't a factor in space or on the moon, so it could be the perfect place to print them directly. The UC Merced team is still testing this technology down here on Earth, but they recently received a grant from NASA to adapt this method to space missions. One of the big unknowns is how well these thin films of crystals will hold up to space itself. As spacecraft pass from light to darkness, they experience extreme temperature changes, and they still don't know how they'll handle degradation in the unfiltered sunlight. The next step will be to perform tests at NASA's Glenn Research Center. They have spacecraft torture chambers called the vacuum facilities. They're capable of simulating the vacuum, temperature extremes, and solar flux of space. And if the technology passes these tests, the next step will be for some of the crystals to fly to the International Space Station as part of the Materials International Space Station Experiment 13, and there will be more testing over the next couple of years. If successful, this technology could be part of NASA's Artemis project to the moon, providing power to the astronauts as they perform longer stays on the lunar surface. Obviously, I'm super excited by any developments that could enable more space based manufacturing and assembly. And if there's actually a way to inkjet print solar panels in space, it could significantly change the way spacecraft are built and launched. Imagine a spacecraft carrying raw plastic and perovskite fluid, and then 3d printing the structure and solar panel film at the same time, building solar panels as big as it needs. Solar panels that never experienced Earth gravity, or the launch. So I'll let you know when I hear of any updates. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here and support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story and links you can find out more. Go to universe today.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format? So you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up right on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'll put a link in the show notes. I talked briefly about the Arconaut spacecraft that's going to 3D print its solar panel structure in space. If you want to learn more about that, we did a whole video on it. You can watch that here.